much of the uh, documentation process was oriented around getting a, a two-dimensional perspective of, of the rec site, but we also did record the third dimension um, at every one meter uh, intersection uh, across the site. We, we measured uh, the top of the rec site and the bottom of the rec site, and you can see in the, the sketch below uh, how this, this worked. The, the black uh, band is, is the lens of the shipwreck site. It just shows how, how uh, thick it was and then you can see the, the wire map across the top showing what the surface of it was like um, and then how it related to the, the sea bottom. A uh, slight uh, uh, angle to the wreck, uh, higher in the west and, and a bit lower towards the east. Now I want to show you some of the uh, various objects as they were found on the sea floor in situ, you know, before they were removed. Um, here you can see uh, on the left, um, sort of encompassing the half meter stick um, next to the arrow is a, a rounded arc. That is uh, uh, what remains of an iron barrel hoop. Um, there are also uh, so, some pieces of stone ballast, but a number of iron uh, nails and uh, towards the right uh, what look like some sticks those are pieces of what was called dunnage and, and uh, those are if you can imagine a tree sapling cut into quarters um, and roughly uh, three four feet long um, those were used to lay on top of the ballast and cushion cargo from the stones um, they could also be used as firewood during the voyage This is uh, a sword, sword blade, um, poking out from uh, underneath some of the hull planking. Um, you can see it's in uh, pretty bad shape. It was all cracked up into pieces when we found it. Uh, but uh, a, a pretty uh, dramatic scene here. Uh, really uh, gives you a, a sense of the shipwreck, I think. This is a shot of a uh, crossbow as it was being uncovered. Uh, found a number of crossbows. Uh, the, the wooden stock was gone, um, but we do have the uh, remnants of the steel bows and the, the uh, brackets that, that uh, held these bows to the, uh, the wooden stock. This is uh, another crossbow um, as it was starting to emerge from the sand. Um, a nail immediately uh, below that. Uh, you can see the arrow pointing towards the nail. Um, but again, a uh, uh, pretty uh, dramatic scene if you're into 16th century shipwrecks. This is the treasure of the St. John's wreck. Um, the uh, diver here is holding a, a small corroded silver coin. Um, these things, because they are in, so corroded, they've turned black, look like little uh, blackened wafers. Uh, but uh, very little in the way of uh, coins was found on this wreck. I think uh, we have uh, well, just uh, three or four silver coins and a couple of copper coins. Here is a wrought iron verso um, being picked up and uh, moved for the first time in uh, over 400 years. And uh, these were wrought iron artillery, um, smaller than the, the main cannons that were on the ship. Um, and and uh, most of them were found fused into a sort of tangled cluster. Uh, this is uh, one of those after it had been uh, separated from its kin. This is another cannon um, being uh, moved uh, from its original location to a, a spot underneath the workboat where it could then be lifted uh, via crane uh, on board for transport to the laboratory. Um, but here the, the divers are moving it again with a, a lift bag. I think I would have used a better rig for that. It looks a little thin to me, but uh, it worked out okay.
The Spanish loved to carry uh, ceramic jars to store uh, oil in, wine in them, uh, water, food, and uh, being ceramic and uh, having gone through a shipwreck, uh, most of them were broken. Here you can see in the upper center the uh, mouth and rim of a uh, pretty large uh, earthenware storage jar and some, some body fragments uh, scattered around near that. Once the uh, area had been uh, cleared of, of wreckage, essentially gone to the bottom of the uh, the shipwreck lens. Um, the excavation then continued on down to the bedrock level and uh, down there uh, it was not uncommon to find pieces of, of lead shot, lead being so dense that over the time um, even through this uh, pretty uh, thick sediment would still work its way all the way down to the bottom. So uh, uh, it was important to go all the way down um, because uh, you just uh, never knew what might be f be found there, uh, especially again lead shot. I always found this photograph uh, to be, uh, I don't know, it really gives a good sense of, of uh, uh, what it was like down there. It was an exceptionally clear day and you get a really broad perspective of, of the site. Uh, beautiful shot. At the end of each field season, we would have uh, uh, literally scores of uh, objects to uh, carry back to the laboratory and uh, deal with there. Really, uh, the excavation is, is just the beginning of any of these projects. You know, the, you, you find the material and you sort of get a, uh, you know, a, a large sense of what's going on, but the details are yet to come. Uh, once this marine concretion is removed and you know the secrets that are underneath can be seen. Um, you know you you really don't know what it is you're dealing with. So uh, cleaning these objects, conserving them, stabilizing them, um, is just as key, if not more so, to understanding uh, what's been found uh, than the excavation is. In the next section of this lecture, um, I will talk about. Uh, the techniques that are used to take a, a piece uh, like you see on the left and, and turn it into, uh, you know, sort of what it looked like when it went to, to the sea floor. You know, how is it that we take these uh, centuries old objects that have been so changed underwater and, and make them new again? Uh, it's a fascinating process. Uh, please, uh, uh, Take a break after this, but uh, I, I hope you move on and, and uh, look at the uh, part two of this lecture.